Oh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're dialing in from or if you're hitting the recording. Uh, thanks for listening in. Uh, this is the uh, Redfish uh, 2022.2 release uh, webinar. Uh, my name is Jeff Otter with uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and uh, I am one of the two uh, co-chairs of the DMTF Redfish Forum. Uh, and with me, as always, is uh, is Mike. Uh, Mike, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Mike Ranieri. I'm the other co-chair of the Redfish Forum, and I'm from Dell. So also here to help out with uh, introducing to the 2022.2 uh, release. All right, so let's let's uh, dive right in. Uh, just a reminder that uh, if you folks are listening in, this this webinar is being recorded, and the recording uh, will be made available uh, soon after the uh, call is completed on uh, DMTF's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, and there, uh, that channel has uh, all the previous webinars as well as a, uh, a whole series of uh, uh, Redfish School uh, videos that, that dive in uh, topic specific uh, uh, things for uh, learning how to use Redfish. So. Uh, before we get started, we'd like to see who's on the call. So uh, we'll get a, our first polling question up, uh, and this is a pretty simple one. So it will only take a uh, only take a few seconds here to, to get uh, folks to uh, to give us their uh, background. All right, that should that should uh, that should do it. Uh, to, uh, Shannon, if we can see the See our poll uh, results. There we go. Uh, oh boy, so we've got more people confused about the fishing show, but uh, that's uh, <laughs> so you're either going to be bored or you're going to learn a whole new uh, work uh, work uh, topic. So, uh, but yeah, looks like once again we've got a good mix, but we have uh, uh, folks that are both implementing uh, and uh, people uh, uh, actually trying to use the use the. Uh, uh, the data, uh, either as an end user or uh, writing a uh, end user tool or you know, a client tool. So good. Uh, so great. So okay, let's get into the content then. All right, and so this uh, this presentation deck is actually also available, so uh, you can download this from the the standards page, and we'll have links for uh, for all of those things here at the at the end of the session. Uh, but uh, this this uh, these slides are taken directly from uh, the release deck that we publish, uh, you know, in conjunction with every Redfish release. So uh, so let's dive into uh, the 2022.2 release. <clears throat> So uh, the first uh, first part of that uh, set of uh, deliverables uh, is the Redfish specification. Uh, there were two uh, two different documents released. Uh, first is an is an errata version, version one dot fifteen dot two. Uh, that uh, that uh, that clarified some uh, uh, some rules around uh, URI naming. Uh, also some uh, uh, some some clarifications around the use of the of the HTTP two hundred four. Uh, response codes uh, and, uh, and and some additional explanations around how uh, properties get filtered uh, either at the property or at the resource level uh, based on the the redfish privileges uh, you know uh, infrastructure uh, and 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 there were uh, obviously various other small clarifications but that's that's what we, that's what those errata leases are for so uh, the the more important one is uh, is the redfish specification 1.16 uh, so that was a minor release and that adds uh, two pieces uh, first is uh, are a couple of new optional uh, but standards defined uh, roles for uh, for user accounts, uh, and uh, Mike, uh, chime in. I'm trying to remember the what the two uh, was it two or three of those, and they were called the. They're they're in two categories. There's a server set of uh, set of roles, server operator, server administrator, and there's also storage related roles. There's a storage backup operator and a storage administrator. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so that uh, and that those and, and we do expect that over time there will be some. Uh, some more of these kinds of standard roles defined so that uh, to, to try to help with folks with interoperability when they give uh, when they want to give out those roles and privileges. Uh, the other piece that was added to the spec uh, were a, a few new uh, uh, pattern annotations uh, that are allowed to be put in the payloads to help uh, to help restrict uh, what users can set or what they should be able to expect what what users should expect to be able to set. 
uh, a property to uh, a, a writable property. Uh, so that uh, we had this covered for enumeration values and that was called the redfish dot allowable values uh, annotation. Um, and that was that was there for uh, properties that were backed by enumerations. Uh, so we've added additional ones now that allow uh, you to 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 restrict uh, a setting to uh, to a range of numbers for for something that was an integer or a uh, or any kind of counter, uh, and and then also for uh, items that are string based. Uh, and these were th uh, suggestions like asset tag or other writable properties that may have either length restrictions or uh, character uh, character limitations. Uh, so you know you can also specify a pattern, uh, you know regex pattern for a string property. And, and those are added to the spec really because we have uh, we 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 define all those annotations in the spec, but then there's definitions in the in the schema files as well. So that's all. That's all that was in the uh, specification and in terms of what the, was added to the protocol. But uh, the most of the action, as usual, happens in the uh, in the Redfish schema bundles. So DSP eighty ten, the Redfish schema bundle. There were twenty seven updated uh, schemas, uh, and uh, so a lot of minor revisions. Excuse me, a lot of minor revisions that uh, that added uh, functionality, and we will go through those in detail here. Uh, the other thing that was uh, the other deliverable uh, that is part of this release bundles uh, was the uh, is the me the re message registry bundle. Uh, so <clears throat> there was a, a new registry for uh, for giving events related to sensors or the Redfish sensor model. Uh, and while we won't go through those uh, here, uh, but you, looking at that registry, you'll see uh, generic messages for. Uh, for threshold crossings, uh, both you know, both uh, uh, violating thresholds and then returning to normal, and and giving a a, a whole pattern for uh, reporting sensor-based, uh, you know, state changes. All right. So uh, one other thing that has happened in this uh, in in this release pass uh, is that we've renamed uh, one of the one of our documents. Uh, what was previously called the Redfish Schema Supplement, which is a a, a, a document that is automatically generated uh, using our 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 tools uh, and pulls information out of the schema files. Uh, this this document previously uh, just pulled the normative descriptions or or what is termed in the in the files themselves the the long description uh, for each property uh, and that is a that was a uh, intended for developers and, and and folks that actually had to you know to had to write and know what those properties uh, how to fill them out uh, what we found was that uh, was that developers looking at those you know also needed the the basic descriptions or the, the you know that that were presented for users to really understand the context of what they were of what they were looking at uh and and also in cases where some of those descriptions may have been uh unclear uh or you know hard to understand out of context so uh so what we did was uh was to change that document uh to include both the the informative or the description text, as well as the normative or long description text, uh, in in one place, that that increases the size of the document, uh, but it does provide now a, a really a one stop shopping for uh, for developers or anybody you know building a service, uh, you know to get all the information that are that are contained in the schema files, uh, and so as part of that. We also renamed that document to to now be called the Redfish Data Model Specification, uh, just to show uh, to help people locate it. Uh, the the word supplement I think was confusing to folks, so uh, so we're trying to better align this with the uh, call, really calling it a specification, uh, even though uh, it, for the for the most part all of the the information is actually coming from the schema files themselves, and the, those files do do remain, uh, you know, the actual source of truth. So anything that's lost in the in the document conversion process, that well, that's considered errata. Uh, so anyway, so you'll see that document. the The links to those documents don't change. The DSP number is still zero two six eight. So uh, only only the name has changed. Uh, oh well, the name has changed, and then and then you'll see it's uh, it's probably uh, another hundred pages as uh, as all that information gets folded in together. Uh, for for folks that are truly just end users uh, in terms of not you know just wanting to see <clears throat> what they should expect in that 
in those properties. The the resource and schema guide uh, continues, uh, you know, unchanged, uh, and so that's a much shorter document. Uh, but if you uh, you know if you need more detail, then the the data model specification will be the one to look at. Uh, the other two documents uh, are, are, are just have, have just been updated, uh, as always, for this release. Uh, the relatively new message registry guide that will include the new sensor registry as well. So DSP 265, 2065, excuse me, uh, has all of those uh, message registries all, all, all in one place. Uh, and uh, lastly, the property guide, as, as always, uh, in case uh, folks need, are trying to look this up in, in kind of a dictionary order. All right, so I'm not going to hand it over to Mike, and he will get into the the meat of the of the new uh, the new pieces within the schemas. Sure, thank you, Jeff. Um, so one of the the main one of the big additions to the the data model is this new security policy resource. Uh, so each manager in a system can have its own security policy resource, and this acts as a central point for configuring uh, your your top level security view of a manager. Right now, there's two sets of functionality in here. The, the first portion is to control SPDM related uh, configurations that, that are allowable allowed for the manager. So you could do things like control whether or not SPDM is, is, uh, is, uh, is currently in use, whether or not to use secure sessions with SPDM enabled devices, uh, the types of algorithms that you're allowed to perform um, while making SPDM related connections. Uh, the, the trusted device certificates or revoked device certificates along with CA certificates for, uh, for SPDM types of devices. So that way you can either, um, uh, you can control whether or not you, uh, you, you trust a, a device based on its certificate usage and make decisions about um, what do you do with that device? Do you just uh, hang up the connection and move on or, uh, or, uh, or you can accept the connection? Uh, for more information uh, about SPDM, this is uh, controlled by our security protocols and data models working group. So if you go to dmtf, dmtf.org slash standard slash SPDM, uh, uh, you can learn more about what SPDM is. The, the other piece of functionality is controlling TLS related connections for the manager. Um, primarily, this, this also uh, uh, allows a user to, to control what types of algorithms and versions of, of TLS are used and the types of uh, uh, certificates that the uh, the manager is allowed to accept. Uh, so this this kind of acts as your global trust store for your uh, for your uh, both uh, outbound and incoming connections. So while you might have certificates installed in other areas of the data model, this this acts as a, a central place for security administrators to control what is allowable for the entire manager. Uh, and uh, it looks like we've missed a question that we we're supposed to ask. So uh, Shani, could you please bring that up? Yep, so we'll uh, just give a, a minute for, uh, for answering this question. Should be a pretty easy one like the others. So, so how familiar are you with Redfish? Okay, I think that's uh, enough time. So we could see. Uh... Okay, so it uh, looks like most folks are just getting started, which is which is okay. So some some of the content may be a little in depth for the new additions. Um, I, I guess as uh, if, if folks are just getting started, one of the uh, recent artifacts published by uh, the Redfish Forum is the the uh, Redfish User Guide. That might be a good starting point to to kind of get a a good uh, picture for how users might interact with the Redfish service. Okay. So uh, next slide. So the the next uh, the next uh, new thing is the trusted component resource and so this is to provide additional modeling uh, for for how do you represent physical uh, security devices to date we've only supported tpms as part of the uh, computer system resource this doesn't scale well for for new types of use cases where you have various security related devices so going forward we actually recommend using this this type of resource in favor of the trusted module objects within a computer system so this this represents a, a security device uh, that that is used to establish trust or 
contains sensitive information. This could be a, a TPM, it could be an external root of trust, it could be an embedded uh, hardware root of trust. Uh, each chassis resource can contain its own trust component collection. And so this, this allows for different devices plugged into chassis to have their own sets of trust component devices. So in some cases, you might have an HBA with its own uh, root of trust that you need to uh, uh, inventory and report outward. And so what you'll find in each of these resources is just all the, uh, the fruit related information about the device, any types of certificates installed on the device that you need to uh, uh, convey to a user. And you also can see what, uh, what firmware image is associated with the device. So if you need to do firmware updates of your uh, security components. All right, next slide, please. Uh, the next addition uh, uh, was to allow for a user to create new Ethernet interface resources. And this is through a post to the Ethernet interface collection. So if folks were paying attention to how the Ethernet interface resource has been growing over time, one of the things we did a few releases ago was deprecate the VLAN network interface collection. Uh, the reason for this was that um, this this uh, resource collection was really not complete to show all the, the types of configurations you can use with a uh, with a, a VLAN interface. Uh, the reality being that it, uh, like a, a VLAN interface is really just a, uh, it's, it's just a full Ethernet interface resource. And so we're trying to grow in that space to, to, to show that you can create new VLANs uh, and, and new types of inter Ethernet inter interfaces on the fly based on, uh, based on uh, what a client might need to configure. So there's two new properties added to support two different types of uh, ether interface configurations that are created uh, kind of more in a, more of a logical manner. Uh, there's team mode, which is used if you need to create uh, teams or bonds of existing interfaces. And then uh, re related ether interfaces, which is to show the kind of the, the association of how you create, um, like how do you, uh, 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 what are the uh, the parent interfaces that that uh, that go into this logical interface? And so, as part of this, you can uh, supply all the other existing properties. So, if you need to create a, a new VLAN, for example, you would you would uh, show T mode of none. You you point to the parent interface where that VLAN is going to be created, and then you can provide uh, uh, the IP address information. You can provide the VLAN tagging information, just like it's a, a physical interface. Uh, so, Jeff, go to the next slide, please. The other addition was to model manager network ports. So there's there's a bit of a gap with kind of the, uh, the kind of the network topology model where we have network port, uh, where we have port resources to show your physical network connectivity, which had things that were uh, important like uh, uh, maybe LLDP information or link information about uh, you know, where things are routed. Um, the manager network interface, uh, the manager Ethernet interfaces did not have this, uh, this information. So we kind of left it off at the, the logical level of an Ethernet interface and didn't show the, uh, didn't map it back to any physical connectivity. So we added two new collections off of manager. We have dedicated network ports um, within manager. So if you have a, a physical port on your on your BMC, and that that's cabled outward. Uh, that's where you would uh, put that type of port. Um, shared network ports was also added to show where you might have a physical port that is shared with a uh, with with a system host with a the host of the system. So uh, this this might be done where you have NCSI from your BMC to a network controller that's used by the host, and so you share the same physical port. Um, it's expected that the members of this shared network ports collection will reference uh, port resources found underneath network adapters since they're shared. And so you don't want to have duplicated information in the model. The other addition was to add a, a port link between Ethernet interface and port. So that way you can, when you're looking at the, the logical view of an Ethernet interface, you can jump to the physical connectivity of the port itself. And so that's how you can find uh, other physical uh, information about that Ethernet interface, such as LLDP information. All right, next slide. 
So this is a kind of more of the pictorial representation of what, what I just went over. So um, in this case, this has both um, shared network ports and dedicated network ports. And we see that uh, ETH0 for the manager uh, is using dedicated network port one. And ETH1 for the manager is using a uh, physical port one underneath network adapter one. So we can assume that there's probably some sort of NCSI connection to uh, to kind of bridge those two uh, interfaces together on, on a shared network adapter. Okay, next slide. All right, Jeff, uh, back Great, to you. Thanks, Mike. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so uh, so I'm going to run through uh, the, uh, the the minor the minor revisions, basically uh, uh, new properties added to uh, to I think what was the count 27 uh, new uh, minor schema releases. So uh, the good news is that a lot of these are uh, properties added in multiple places uh, as we continue to flesh out these data models. Uh, so yeah, we, this we're not going to we won't go into too much great detail and just hit the highlights here. So uh, <clears throat> so in action info. Uh, was uh, the, the the new annotations because those show up for uh, describing patterns, uh, and so you need to be able to also show uh, sh show those supported numbers and patterns uh, for action parameters, and so those uh, th those are shown as properties, not as annotations at that level. Uh, in assembly, there is a new property called replaceable, and we'll see this one through throughout the model. Uh, replaceable is a way is a boolean to uh, indicate that 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 product or the the resource uh, can be replaced on its own meaning you know can I can a user physically remove that uh, and then there are some policy uh, pieces uh, also around that as to well do I replace it here or is this replaced as part of a larger subsystem so you'll see some of those uh, as, as we go through uh, some of these other additions but uh, but replaceable was uh, kind of goes in conjunction with the hot pluggable. Uh, so even if, you know, if something is marked as not hot pluggable or hot pluggable false, uh, it still may be indicated as replaceable true, meaning, well, I still can, I can still take it out. Uh, and obviously so that's, that's in the general assembly uh, piece. Uh, and then it shows up in, in a lot of the specific uh, 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 resources. So uh, battery will be the, you know, is obviously alphabetically the first one that shows up and we'll see it uh, many other places. Uh, chassis, same thing. Uh, we had uh, also had not, did not have a hot pluggable chassis uh, that did not have that property. So that has also been added uh, as well as links to the new uh, trusted components pieces uh, and a, a hardware version. Uh, in uh, in circuit and a few other, uh, I think there's another place this shows up. Uh, as, as we were modeling uh, voltage regulators and some other uh, power supply types, there is a need for uh, for uh, all of the low voltage uh, or kind of the the you know system board level voltages uh, to be expressed as as supported types. And so you'll see here uh, the 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 typical you know three five nine and twelve volt, and then uh, some that are becoming more. Uh, prevalent the 16 volt and then obviously down the processor all the way down to a 1.8 uh, volt uh, so those are being added for voltage types uh, in uh, in component integrity there was uh, uh, the, the, I think the uh, the new links to uh, some of the sign the sign measurements oh sorry that's a new action uh, and then uh, giving a uh, giving a capability here of, of how how big that nonce uh, can be uh, was also added. Uh, and as Mike went through the new trusted components pieces, so some of the earlier work that has has now been uh, superseded, uh, so those uh, those things have been deprecated. So you'll see uh, trusted modules, and I think there's a few other places in the, in, as we go through this list uh, of other items that have been deprecated in favor of the new uh, the new models. Uh, and this, I, I, and Mike, if I remember right, this came from actually from a user. Uh, but uh, giving a boot source uh, in the in the boot source boot source override, uh, the the a generic term called recovery uh, has been added as a boot source, uh, and and we were kind of surprised that this that this was not uh, something that had been uh, requested you know years ago, uh, but uh, effectively a way for you to for a user to specify a boot source to whatever the recovery. 
uh, process is for that uh, for that device. You know, that could be uh, some uh, some particular media or a recovery partition, uh, you know, and so forth. But uh, so the the implement and again with with Redfish trying to be uh, trying to be user facing and interoperable. Uh, we don't express a lot of the details as to what constitutes recovery, uh, but it's it's allowing the user to say, hey, I, I, you know, whatever recovery means to you, uh, you know, please do that. Uh, so in in and also throughout the model, there there uh, we've spread out some of the reset to defaults, uh, and so this is taking uh, user settings. Uh, and, and apply and allowing a, allowing a, a, a generic action to uh, to give you the ability to set those user settings back to a default uh, default values. These are separate from some of the other reset actions that you'll see, uh, where things like resetting metrics that's resetting counters. So uh, we try to keep those things separate. So it's this is not a do all of those things. Uh, it's it's really setting user uh, user settings back to their factory defaults. And and again, you'll see this in in a number of places. So any place that there's a a, a number of user settings, um, especially user settings that may not be backed by enumerations. So uh, you know uh, you know uh, links, uh, uh, counters, or other kinds of you know threshold settings where uh, where the user cannot discover uh, those default settings through the data model. Uh, we really needed that 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 uh, action to you know to be able to restore all that. Um, as Mike has already talked about, some of the things in Ethernet interface. Uh, so those are new to support those the teaming support, um, and you know it's like uh, yeah we're replaceable uh, places again where for folks have uh, have asked us to add uh, you know typical functionality. Uh, we'll we'll spread those out so uh, fabric adapter now can have its uh, location indicator uh, shown in the model. Uh, in uh, in log entry, this is carrying uh, a, a piece from our eventing model to say that if I have uh, multiple uh, multiple log entries that are all related in, in a specific event group, uh, and this is giving a flag to say that look that there is a uh, of the many log entries that that uh, that were created uh, to document a specific event or a particular event group uh, that there is one of there is one log entry in particular that that describes a very specific event message. So this is just aligning uh, log entries with uh, with what we had already done uh, in the eventing model. Uh, as man, as uh, as Mike pointed out, this the new links here to the to the collections of Ethernet adapters uh, and security policy and manager uh, under the diagnostic data, which is a relatively new uh, addition for uh, for for really uh, you know uh, uh, developer level uh, details about uh, what is going on uh, you know in the manager manager firmware. So there are uh, there are there's uh, there's uptime counters and you know and a reset uh, reset excuse me, a restart counters uh, to, to, for, you know, for developer purposes. Um, in uh, managed network protocol, this is uh, uh, giving, a, uh, I think this was a, this was a miss earlier that uh, you need to be able to show uh, where, which servers in the NTP object are actually have been supplied uh, by the network protocol as opposed to entered by users uh, because the the NTP object would show what time time servers were in use uh, and which servers you knew about but it, there was a there's no distinction uh, in, in the previous versions uh, as to which ones were entered and which ones were had been populated by the service meaning you know coming in from the from the network service itself. Uh, you see reset the defaults uh, <clears throat> metric definition. Uh, this is a uh, this is a switch uh, to to use the metric ID, which was a better uh, a better linkage here. Trying to trying to make it easier to use uh, the the metric report and the and the uh, the telemetry service in general. Uh, <clears throat> In the, oh, in network device function, this is uh, allowing HTTP boot. So there is a new object that describes uh, HTTP boot, uh, and then obviously gives HTTP as a way, uh, as a as one of the potential boot modes. Um, in uh, it's the PCI device, we had some new some new functionality for uh, for retimers. Uh, there were some very uh, interesting, you know, complex uh, connectivity between. Uh, uh, some some uh, uh, compound devices, uh, and so the need to to reveal 
uh, the retimer details, uh, you know, in that device or between those devices uh, was uh, was needed. Uh, and, and so we've added that as a type of, of PCI switch. Do not expect to see this uh, for the majority of device cases uh, where you know the the, the connectivity uh, you know among chips on a particular of a adapter uh, you know is not important, but there are cases where it is, and so we're allowing that you know to be modeled if necessary. Uh, the uh, in, 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 uh, and along those same lines, being able to show a link uh, from a PCI function to the processor uh, that's associated with that function. So again, more fleshing out of the of the PCI model uh, as, as more and more complex uh, adapters uh, you know come into the standard. Uh, and and alongside with that, uh, with uh, the 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 new uh, uh, DC voltages that I mentioned earlier, so uh, being able to model a uh, a DC power regulator, uh, or uh, as a as a uh, as a freestanding power supply, uh, that was added, uh, and also uh, you know added those nominal voltage types, uh, you know to to that power supply as well to show, uh, you know in the case where one power supply is actually providing power to another supply in a chain of uh, of equipment, uh, we wanted to be able to say. To show which you know what what's the expected output voltage, uh, so that you knew where where you know where these things you know uh, where, where where that power goes to next. Uh, in processor, there were a, a couple uh, additions around uh, around the the what's called throttling or the uh, you know the restriction on on uh, on the speed and 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 performance of the processor uh, based on some environmental conditions, either power or uh, or uh, uh, temperature related or you know, thermal related. Uh, so so giving that uh, gi giving being able to to see that the processor is being throttled and and why it's being throttled that is now being exposed. Uh, and you can see that that things like replaceable uh, and uh, some of the other uh, result to defaults so that those those common things as we said uh, show up. Uh, and then lastly, uh, giving uh, a more uh, a additional information uh, around the the uh, the location of the processor in terms of uh, of how it relates to instances within the operating system. Uh, that was uh, that was added. So this is a an index trying to match up what is reported by the OS uh, so that you can match those uh, those uh, uh, details uh, to what is seen in the in the you know, in the Redfish uh, service. Ah, and the last slide. Uh, so, uh, uh, a similar piece here uh, in terms of duration. Excuse me, in terms of throttling. So, in the processor metrics. Uh, so, this is reporting how much time uh, the uh, the processor has been throttled, either due to power limitations or thermal, you know, temperature limitations. Uh, so, those those metrics have been added. Uh, again, another reset to defaults. Uh, session. The the the, add, the addition of context here is is for the client to be able to provide. Uh, or, or sorry, the service to be able to explain in the session collection, uh, you know, what, where is this, uh, where is this user, or where is this session being created from? You know, is that coming in from a user? Is it coming from an application or uh, some other source? So this is really for, uh, you know, for an administrator who is looking at uh, all of the active sessions uh, on a service to try to understand, you know, not just, uh, you know, based on user or IP address, but but what's the what's the context of that connection. Um, and then lastly, uh, in the additional versions uh, uh, within the software inventory, uh, we've added one more uh, one more possible version to report, and that is an OS distribution. So so not just the uh, not just a kernel version, but actually uh, uh, an entire OS distribution. Uh, and this is for uh, for you know pieces of software that may uh, that may have included a, a you know a real bundle of uh, of an operating system plus. Uh, plus an application load, and so this is a way to show, you know, what was that, uh, you know, what was that built on for the, you know, for the sake of uh, uh, being able to to pull that information out for uh, for security, uh, uh, you know, for, uh, for security uh, 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 notices and so forth. Uh, Mike, I kind of blew through all that. Any uh, anything that you wanted to uh, me to back up on to to show or? Nope, I think you got it all. All right, good. All right, and, and as I said, that and just a reminder: if you have any questions about that, as soon as we uh, 
uh, as soon as we complete here, uh, we will move uh, move on to uh, a live uh, roundtable. Uh, the links for that uh, were emailed to you, and uh, we'll also uh, Shannon will put that here in the chat uh, you know, momentarily. But uh, but before we get into the before we get into uh, the last bits of that, uh, just uh, one more poll question. And then this is regarding the the open source tools that uh, that the DMTF provides uh, all through GitHub uh, for uh, in a couple areas of of, uh, uh, of interest, you know, for for folks that are creating uh, creating services that are uh, conformance uh, and test tool uh, you know, validation tools, uh, and there are also end user tools. The the tackle box being uh, trying to be uh, our uh, you know li little bits of command line tools uh, to both give some common uh, you know, some common functions that that folks may need for operating on uh, devices that support Redfish, uh, but also serving as a uh, as an educational, uh, you know, uh, a tool set uh, for you to learn how to to actually write, uh, write your own tools uh, and use the libraries that we present. So uh, let's see the results of that. Oh, and good. And once again, we've uh, we've uh, we've uh, given you some new information. If you didn't know those were available, uh, I'll have links here. Let me go. Actually, let me go ahead and show that. Uh, so, uh, if you if you were unaware that we that those tools are available, uh, this is where you can find all that information. So, um, so the the <clears throat> the 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 most important link to remember uh, for uh, uh, for everyone on the call is this one here, redfish.dmtf.org. That's the Redfish developer portal. Uh, that will link to everything else uh, that, that we make available uh, publicly f around the whole Redfish ecosystem. So if you remember one site, uh, you know that's the one to go to because you can find all the other links are all shown there. Uh, it, for the actual standards and the downloading the, the, the guide documents and the other uh, actual deliverables from the DMTF, uh, that's that's on the standards page. So it's dmtf.org slash standards slash redfish. Uh, the uh, the portal itself, I guess, it has has all those links, but also shows uh, you know white papers. Uh, the the there's also an interactive resource explorer, so it allows you to uh, to just click around uh, a, a bunch of uh, of the different payloads that are expressed in a Redfish service as an example, and there's there's actually a number of uh, of example devices now, uh, so you can see what you would expect to to find, uh, you know, through the Redfish interface. So that's a it's a really good way to to get a feel for uh, for both how the data model operates and also what kind of uh, data you can expect to find. Uh, so if you actually have questions and and haven't and aren't uh, joining us live here for the for the roundtable after the webinar. Uh, I encourage you to please visit our public forum at redfishforum.com, uh, and uh, the, uh, we uh, monitor this and we'll answer your questions there uh, and provide any guidance or take suggestions and input. Um, but along that lines, I think we, I think we had some folks that were asking questions like, "How do I, uh, how, how am I able to contribute to this you know, as an individual? If I'm a if I'm a freelancer, an independent contractor, somebody not working for a." Uh, a company that's a, a DMTF member. Uh, there's <clears throat> there's two ways, and we absolutely want to 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 take all your feedback and suggestions, uh, and we absolutely do uh, take input from the you know from end users and get that folded into the standard, uh, and and generally a lot faster than people uh, would expect us to do. So, uh, <clears throat> so first thing is is you know post those questions or comments or suggestions uh, on the Redfish forum. We do review all every post. Uh, within the group and we'll respond to you. Um, if it is actually a contribution that you'd like to make to the standard or you know something that you think should be added added to the standard, either the the protocol or the data model, uh, or just clarifications that you think if something doesn't make sense uh, and have some some better text, uh, we are happy to take all that feedback. Uh, because of the intellectual property and other kind of rules, uh, a code of conduct that that involves the the publication of a standard, uh, that has to go through our feedback portal, uh, and so there's a there's a process there it's not difficult the one thing that uh, that that may uh, that, that may trip some folks up is that you do have to create an account on the DMTF website in order to provide that feedback and that's solely for the purpose of being able to track uh, where that where that feedback is coming from uh, because uh, you know you are you are contributing things from an intellectual property standpoint so we want to make sure that all the legal 
uh, legal stuff is, is handled. Uh, I am not a lawyer, so please consult your own legal folks uh, regarding all of that topic. But that is the one thing that, uh, that sometimes folks are surprised that, that, yeah, you do have to, you do have to create an account. You don't, there is no cost or anything, uh, obligations for that, obviously. And lastly, if you are with a company that's, uh, <clears throat> that is implementing Redfish or has interest uh, in, <clears throat> in joining us, uh, the please, uh, the, the, the come on in the water is fine. Uh, you can see more information about uh, how to join the DMTF, uh, the standards body. Uh, as standards bodies go, uh, we're pretty inexpensive and uh, we, we try to move quickly uh, to, you know, to keep this, uh, to keep this, uh, uh, the, the Redfish standard uh, continue to evolve and grow. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, uh, Shannon has also posted a link for the, the uh, survey, so please let us know what you thought about this uh, webinar today. Uh, Mike, with that, any, uh, any last uh, comments? Nope, I, I hope just to see you guys in the, uh, in the round table. I, I, I'd like to have the one-on-one uh, -on -one discussions with folks. All right, well, with that, we will uh, conclude uh, the uh, 2022.2 release webinar. Uh, thank you all for attending. And like we said, we hope to see you uh, just briefly here into the uh, roundtable. Thanks for attending.